divine love. Just to let you know that Jesus is still the answer. Look at you and say, Jesus is still the answer. He's the answer for the, our world today, supplying all our needs. I welcome you to Destiny Empowerment Chapel International, where winners are born, champions are raised, and lives are built and nurtured to the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. As a church family, our core value and vision is to empower people to excel in all facets of life through the teach preaching of God's infallible and unadulterated word. We'd like to honor the presence of all our first timers. Today is your first time of coming to worship and fellowship with us. God richly bless you. I will encourage you to make this place your home church. Amen. I'm excited to see our dear sister Ifioma, a surprise visit from Nigeria back to Ghana. Let's appreciate the presence of our lovely sister Ifioma. If you have your mobile phone, please go on Facebook and share the link to bless somebody. Amen. If you are here and you celebrated your birthday in the month of January, let me see your hand. If you are a January born, let me see your hand. Stand to your feet and let's wish them a blissful, happy, happy, blessed birthday. Clap your hands and let's honor these wonderful people. I would like to encourage each and every one of you to become a covenant member of the house. Make this house your home church. Amen. How many February bonds are in the house this morning? Your papa is a February born. The first lady is a February born. Bishop Morris is a February born. Sister Ifwa is a February born. How many more February? Mama Kujo is a February born. My young son is a February born. Miracle is a February born. The youngest prophet is a February born. So this month is our month of celebration is also our founders day month it's also our church anniversary month and it's also your papa and your mama's birthday you want to put your hands together and thank god for what god is about to do amen god bless you now if we stand for kings let us stand for the reading of god's infallible unadulterated and changing and changeable word would like to use this opportunity to thank all of you for your prayers and your support over the week. I would like to extend my warm appreciation to the First Lady, to all the pastors, to all the leaders, and to every one of you who prayed for us this past Thursday and Friday. I had the honor and the privilege to preach for one of the contemporary patriarchs fathers of this land, the men that became the tributary and the conduit of the charismatic movement of God in Africa, Reverend Steve Mensah. And I want the whole church to also appreciate my instrumentalist for a very powerful, powerful ministration. Clap your hands for my boys and to all the musicians and the choristers that join us. You can do better for Jesus. Amen. God richly bless you for your love, and your prayers. I've received lots of messages, lots of messages. This morning when I woke up to pray and to study, I received a message from Reverend Joshua Obain from CCC. He's the son of Reverend Ransford Obain, and he said that, you are one of the baddest preachers I've ever seen. And CCC Kumasi needs you. Amen. So I know that out of these ministrations, God has unveiled my ministry, not only to the world, because the world knows who I am, but mostly in Ghana, most people don't know what I carry. And by the special grace of God, on Thursday and Friday, the Lord did marvelous things. Amen. Let's clap our hands and thank him for his grace and his mercies. Amen. 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 Okay, if you have your Bibles, and you will, 
Please say after me, this is my Bible. I believe it is the word of God. I am who and what it says I am. I can do what it says I can. I must have what it says I will. And so bless me God. If you have your Bibles, turn your Bibles to the book of Deuteronomy, the 30th chapter. Deuteronomy chapter 3, 0. I'd like to issue a warrant this morning for your intelligent arrest and summon you to the 15th and the 19th verse. February is a very special month for us as a church family because it was the month that our church was officially outdoored and inaugurated. Hence, it is our month of vision. The year 2020 is our year of maximum impact. Look at someone say, our year of maximum impact. And if you will make maximum impact, then you have to have a strong vision. Say strong vision. So God speaking to the people of God in the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 30, verse 15 to 19. I would like us to read in concert. It's good to see you, Brother Tiaku. God bless you. Let's read together. See, I have set before thee this day life and good and death and evil. Let's read together. My son, what, what happened? Bring it back. See, I have set before thee this day life and good, death and and evil. We are reading till the 19th verse. Please, let's go. In that I command thee this day, love, to love the Lord thy God, number one. Number two, to walk in his ways and to keep his commandment and his statute and his judgment that thou mayest live and multiply. And the Lord thy God shall bless thee in the land whither thou goest to possess it. Let's go. But if thine heart turn away so that thou will not hear, but shall be drawn away and worship other gods and serve them, then 18 and 19, let's see what it says. I denounce unto you this day that ye shall surely perish and that ye shall not prolong your days upon the land whither thou passeth over Jordan to go possess it. Let's, let's, let's look at the verse 9 there. I call heaven and earth to record this day against you that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore choose life. Choose life that both thou and thy seed may live. Lift your hands. Father, speak to us this morning in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Before you take your seat, go to three persons and declare, choose life. Choose life. You may be seated. You cannot have a buoyant, fruitful, successful vision without understanding the power of quality decisions. Everyone be seated. Please, in all due respect, let every protocol be observed. The power of quality decisions. In this month of vision for maximum impact, the qualitativeness of your vision is a precursor to maximum impact. The Lord admonishing the church, he says, choose life. The word choose is a component of decision making. Somebody holler decision making. When you choose, it means you have decided. When you choose, it means you have decided. 
Ladies and gentlemen, please understand in all humility that there is a correlation between decision and destiny. There is a connection between decision and destiny. Decision gives birth to destiny. In our month of vision for maximum impact, the kind of decisions that you will begin to make from now to the end of December will either make or unmake your destiny. Praise the Lord. Great and quality decisions gives birth to quality destinies. Great and quality decisions gives birth to quality destinies. Ladies and gentlemen, please understand as I go further that your decision is a major component of your destiny fruition. The kind of decisions you make is a major component of your destiny fruition. Behind every great destiny, there is a great decision. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Recently, I was in prayer, the Holy Spirit whispered to me and said, young man, for the last 15 years, I think either 15 or 14, my wife even reminded me of that. I used one number for a long time. And I was inspired to change the number because there are the, the Lord made it clear to me that there are people that I should not hear from them the rest of my life. Because the more you bring such people in your life, the more you compromise what is ahead of you. Praise the Lord. So if you don't make quality decisions, you cannot have great destiny. Do you hear what I said? Look at someone and say, decide well. You are not here today. Look at someone and say, decide well. Behind every great destiny, there is a great decision. On the contrary, bad decision gives birth to wasted destiny. Bad decisions gives birth to wasted destiny. Bad decisions. Please understand that as a child of God, you can be prayed for. You can be prophesied to. You can be anointed with 17 bottles of oil. But if you make wrong decisions in 2020, you will have a wasted life. You will have a what? Because destiny is a product of quality decisions. Destiny. Destiny is a product of of quality decision. This house is a warehouse of wisdom. It's a warehouse of wisdom. Where we don't jump, we don't holler, we don't preach like the drunken master here. Here we teach wisdom. Say we teach what? Teach wisdom. Destiny is a product of what? Quality decision. Look at somebody say destiny is a product of quality decision. Destiny. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, please understand that where I decide to go, who I decide to be with, 
what I decide to say, what I decide to do, all these things gives birth to my destiny in life. Why are you, why are you so happy? You like what I said? That's powerful. I like your hair. Is it a very good hair? Is it expensive hair? I can see you are looking very powerful. May the Lord bless you. you. Always come to church and serve your God. Never give up on the choir. Amen. Clap your hands for Jesus. If you understand homiletics and humanetics, what I'm doing is part of preaching. Yeah, sometimes I have to digress a bit. You make yourself too stiff. You have a stiff destiny. Look at someone and say, smile and relax. It's not you who gave birth to Jesus Christ. Amen. You are not the one who died. And your blood did not save me. So look at someone and say, be happy. God bless you. Clap your hands onto Jesus. Where you go, who you decide to be with. What you decide to do. All these things, they accumulate in your destiny formation. So my destiny, Uncle Moses, is hinged on my decision making. My destiny as a child of God is contingent on my decision making. It is not automated. It is not automatic. No, not at all. Decide life. Choose life. Decide God. Decide to walk with God in 2020. Decide to have a vision for your life. Decide to be intentional about whatever you do in 2020. Praise the Lord. I have seen many people who have died because of men pleasing. Pleasing men. Pleasing men. As a young man growing up, one of the major mistakes I made as a young pastor is going extra mile and pleasing men at the extent of demeaning and destroying my own happiness. And most of the people that I went extra mile to please them, I lost all of them. So 2020, be intentional about whatever you do. Clap your hands unto Jesus. <laughs> Choose life. Choose life. Choose life. Look at someone say, choose life. Decide life. Because no one ends anywhere in life by accident. No one ends anywhere in life by accident. We are no more in the days of Spontaneous, accidental breakthroughs. No. God is a systemic procedure God. Wherever people get in life is because they did something that gave birth to where they are today. Where they are today. I am where I am today because of the decisions I made yesterday. That's the reality of it. And you will be where you shall be tomorrow because of the decisions of today. The decisions of today. The decisions of today will catapult you to where you will be tomorrow. Which means, Uncle Moses, that your tomorrow will be a product of your today. Your tomorrow will be a product of your today. Choose life. 
Choose what? Choose life. Choose life. Choose life. Choose life. Whilst in the discipleship class, the Lord put a rematos in my spirit. When he said life is not a race, but a journey. In a race, you are in a hurry to finish. But in a journey, you fall down, you make mistakes, you get up. When we started ministry, we saw ministry like a race. Everything was highly competitive. You desire to become like your brothers. But when you go through the journey of life, you don't desire to become anybody. You desire to become who God has made you to become. That is where patience and enduring faith comes in. You understand that your part is different from someone's part. So the fact that somebody is celebrating his miracle must not put you in a terrifying place for you to do something to get that which your friend has gotten. Wait for your time. Wait for your time. Wait for your visitation. Wait for your Kairos moment because in his own time he makes all things Uncle Moses, during the school of ministry, I told them that I saw a couple, Mr. Martin, who had a very powerful wedding. In fact, extraordinary, flamboyant wedding. A wedding that is of 21st century classy class. All the highs in the society, the governmental officials, the governors, every high standing elite class personality was there. Praise the Lord. But the wedding collapsed in less than a year. The marital union collapsed in what? I've also seen a wedding that they did not spend even 2,000 Ghana on. Today, they have two children and they have been married for the last 10 years and they are enjoying life. So, is it the shine, shine life that you want or you want the calm and the most unassuming life, the one that will not attract any glamour and splendor from the society, and have your peace of mind or you want the ecstasies of life and lose it tomorrow. Take your time and choose life. You are not in a relay race with anybody. Your race is not somebody's race. This life is a journey. Take your time and build it one after the other. Line upon line. Precept upon precept. Ideas upon ideas. Don't make life a competition with anybody. Take your time and build your life according to the pattern of your destiny. Amen. Amen. When we started pastoring, when I come to church and I see empty chairs, I had to be breaking. I had to be what? Until the Lord showed me the revelation. That growth, true growth, is not speedy. True growth is systemic. Line upon line. You take your time. Like a child growing up, the child will fall. You lift the child up. You clean the child. That is how church is like. That is how life is like. 2020, that get rich now scheme, avoid it. Anything that will want to make you stupendously rich overnight, avoid it. Take your time and allow God to prepare you for what he has for you. If you believe it, clap your hands unto Jesus. Choose life. Look at someone and say, choose life. One of the greatest things you can do is to make quality decisions. Quality decisions. 
Look at someone and say, make quality decisions. Make quality decisions. And there are five things I need you to know about quality decisions. You will never forget this day. In 10 minutes, I'm out of the way. Five things you need to know. Number one, great decisions are the product of great destinies. It will involve your participation. It will involve your engagement. In Luke chapter 5, verse 11 to 18. Look at Luke chapter 5. Look, no, I beg your pardon. Luke 15, verse 11. You look at the life of the prodigal son. He said, I will arise and go to my father's house. He said, I will arise. Look at verse 18. All of us knows the story of the wasteful spender. The prodigal son means the wasteful what? The wasteful what? He said, I will arise and go to my father. <laughs> oh, boy, Shabaya. And say to him, I will arise and go to my father and say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee. Let's go. And I'm no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one of thy hired servants. The prodigal son decided to go back to the father. And that was the end of his life of waste, life of penury, life of isolation, life of desertion, life of destruction. He decided to go back to his father. Praise the Lord. Look at someone and say, go back to your father. No, that was not strong enough. Shake somebody like you're going to shake his hand over and holler, go back to your father. Go back to your prayer lifestyle. Go back to your worship lifestyle. Go back to the same thing you used to do that gave you the miracle you enjoyed yesterday. Move from laxity and move into a time of forceful takeover. Go back to your father. He decided to go back to his father because great destinies are the product of great decisions. Number two, great decisions are more important than good conditions. You hear me? Let's suffer today and chop tomorrow. Praise the Lord. I said great decisions are more important than good conditions. If you don't make quality decisions, you will be backward in life. You will sink in destiny if you live your life outside God. You will not make it in life. Great decisions are more important than what? Good conditions. Let's look at these characters. Number one. one a, look at these characters. Abraham chose to follow God. He chose to obey God. Genesis chapter 12 verse 1 to 4. God spoke to Abraham, move from your house. Hello? Like God speaks to me and says, go to Cape Coast. Don't, not just Cape Coast. Go to Eswetu. Not just Eswetu. Go to one of the hinterlands of Eswetu and start a church there. You leave the environs of Accra to a village. That's what God told Abraham. Abraham decided to obey God. Verse 4. Listen to this carefully. Verse 4. And Abraham departed as the Lord had spoken unto him. At the expense of his condition. That was awesome. He decided to obey God. 
Would you obey God? Or would you listen to man? Number two, Enoch chose to walk with God. Genesis chapter 5, verse 21 to 24. Enoch chose to walk with God because great decisions, quality decisions are more important than good conditions. Some of you are looking for good conditions and you will do anything for it. Some of you can kill for good conditions. Some of you can sell your brother for good conditions. Some of you can do anything. Worse. You can slander for good conditions. Some of you can steal for good conditions. Some of you can do very, very terrible things that under normal circumstance you will never do. But because of good conditions, you will do it. But understand that good conditions can come today and tomorrow you will lose it. Am I talking to somebody here? Enoch chose to walk with God. Ladies and gentlemen, understand that good conditions without great decisions will end in deep frustrations. Good conditions without great decision will end in deep frustration. Do you know there are men who made it very well in this nation? And today, they are standing on the street begging for bread. You have, not, you, have not seen, you have not seen it before. You have not seen billionaires, billionaires, today on the streets of Accra. Hey, then you are not in Ghana. Have you seen pastors who used to control 5,000, 10,000 crowd? And today, they are the beer parlor, drinking beer, and they have lost everything. Good conditions without great decisions will lead and end you into what? Deep frustrations. Ladies and gentlemen, look at somebody and say, please run your own race. I want this church to be a calm, sweet, nice church filled with people who have wisdom, who understand the schematics of destiny. Esau chose to sell his birthright for a muzzle of bread. <laughs> he chose, he made that decision. The patriarchal lineage was supposed to be Abraham, Isaac, and Esau. But in Genesis 25, verse 29 to 34, Esau sold it to Jacob. He chose to sell his birthright. <laughs> he, he chose to satisfy himself temporary for a permanent eternal waste. Understand, ladies and gentlemen, that great decisions are more important than good conditions. Number three. The way you choose will determine the place you end in life. The way you choose. Praise the Lord. The way you choose. The way you choose. The way you choose. If you choose the right positions, you will enjoy the right condition. If you choose the right partner, you will enjoy marriage. Praise the Lord. If you choose the right career, you will enjoy a right life. Let me tell you this to encourage you, young women. There is a perception we have in Ghana that half caste are insolent, greedy, and very, very disrespectful. Right? Hello? Do you agree? That, that's the perception. On Friday all night, I went to, I went to preach for Prophet Renard. 
Oswanza. I'm saying this to encourage the young women who are singles. My instrumental is you are at the top. What did you observe what she was doing? Did you observe the humility? Huh? When we finished preaching, did you see what she did? She came and knelt before me and said, Daddy, thank you so much. I was overwhelmed by the depth of her humility. Beautiful young woman with two kids, married to a great prophet, lives overseas. Awesome woman of God. And I look at some of our young women today who are singles trusting God for marriage. They literally are the men in their relationship. And the man is the woman in their relationship. Praise the Lord. Look at somebody and say, humility is key to elevation. Humility is very important. And I say this respectfully to compliment my brother, Prophet Bernard Oswansa. That if you watch this session of my teaching, I applaud your wife for the exhibition of great humility before me. Because she could have decided to say that my husband is your colleague. So I don't have to bow and worship before you. No. She was literally even covering the people who were on the floor. She was working like an usher. Amen? Listen. Life is a very long journey. Hey, life is longer than what you think. This life is a very long journey. Take your time. So that God can position you at the place of destiny. If Papa is making sense, clap your hands unto Jesus. Differently because they choose differently. Choose the right course. Choose the what? People end differently because they choose differently. Let me tell you one thing. When this man, my father in the Lord, was telling me about his worth, net worth. Billions of dollars. Kobe Bryant. Billions of what? Who is going to eat it? The favorite child. He died with the favorite child. The wife will never recover from the shock. Praise the Lord. Hey, give the wife all the men in this world. Give the wife all the money. She will never recover from this. Death is the most painful thing that can happen to humanity. Hey, the hole that has been left, the cavity, the canal, the emptiness, the voidness in the heart of the wife can never be recovered eternally. So what is money without life? Why are you trying to kill yourself at the expense of your peace and your life? Take your time and allow God to prepare you and prune you and place you at the right place of destiny. Clap your hands unto Jesus. People end differently because they choose differently. Number four, I'm giving you five points and I'm out of your way. Life must be lived by choice and not left to chance. Life must be lived by choice and not left to chance. A life left to chance is a life in chains. 
whatever happens should happen. Never say that again. Oh, no. Be intentional about everything. A life left to chance is a life left in chance. A life left to chance has no chance. A life left to chance has no chance. A life left to chance is a life left to waste. Life left to chance is a life left to waste. Praise the Lord. The young lady who has been feigning and faking her death for families to give her attention for love and for money. So she has faked her death three times. And the last one I was told that when she faked and feigned the death, this time she died. Oh, yes. She died. She used to be a member of this house. She died. A Nigerian Liberian lady. She died. The last time she came, she was sitting here. Very slim. Dark one. She died. You have faked your death, feigned your death, one, two, three, for attention, for money, and all that. The fourth time when she faked it, this time, Death say this time I will spare you. Never before I call. The final call. A life left to chance has no chance. A life left to chance is a life left to waste. Life must be lived by choice and not what? Number five. The greatest decision is to choose to become everything that God wants you to be. <laughs> I'll be preaching in five minutes. Stay with me. I said the greatest decision, the greatest choice, the greatest decision you can make is to choose to become everything that God has decided you to be. The greatest decision to make is to be in God's will. The greatest decision to make is to be in correlation to the perfect and the perfect and the permissive will of God. The greatest decision to make is to be in alignment, in congruent with the will of God concerning your life. I came to announce unto somebody this morning, choose God, pursue God, desire for God, chase for God. Paul said in Ephesians chapter 3 verse 20 that God is able to do exceedingly, abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us can I tell you somebody why God is able because he's the king of the Jews he's the king of Israel he's the king of righteousness he's the king of the ages he's the king of the heavens he's the king of glory he's the lord of lords is my God able slap your name and say neighbor choose God because he is able um, there is no means of measure that defines his limitless love his love is enduring he is entirely sincere he is eternally steadfast he is immortally graceful he is imperially powerful he is impartially merciful is my God able 
Slap your name as a neighbor. Choose God. Become all that God has designed for you to be. Because he is the greatest phenomenon that has ever crossed the horizon of the world. Slap your neighbor and say your God is able. He's God's son. He's the sinner savior. He's the centerpiece of civilization. He's unprecedented. He's unparalleled. He's the man who took nothing and made everything out of nothing. He's the loftiest idea of literature. He's the highest personality in philosophy. He's the fundamental truth of doctrinal theology. He's the all-sufficient God. All-sufficient savior. He supplies strength for the weak. He's available for the tempted. He supplies energy to the tried. He sympathizes and he saves. He strengthens and he sustains. Slap your neighbor and neighbor. Make God your everything. Choose God. Stay in his presence. Connect to be with God. Connect to the altar of God. In 2020, if you are going to make a maximum impact, then stay under the custody, the companionship, under the tabernacle of your God. Because whatever you are looking for outside of God is not a reality. Slap your neighbor and say, Neighbor, in 2020, stay with God because He guards and He guides, He heals the sick, He cleanses the leper, He forgives the sinners, He discharges debtors, He delivers the captive, He defends the feeble, He blesses the young, He serves the unfortunate, He regards the aged, He rewards the diligent, He beautifies the meek, Is your God able? I came to talk to somebody. My God is able. He is the key to knowledge. He is the wellspring of wisdom. He is the doorway of deliverance. He is the pathway of peace. He is the roadway of righteousness. He is the highway of holiness. He is the gateway of glory. Is my God able? Slap your name and say your God is able. His life is matchless. His goodness is limitless. His mercy is everlasting. His love never changes. His word is enough. His grace is sufficient. His reign is NATO. His yoke is easy. His burden is light. I wish I could understand and describe your God. Slab your neighbor and say neighbor your God is able he's the indescribable incomprehensible he's the invisible God he's irresistible you can't get him out of your mind you can't wash him out of your face you can't wash him out of your head you can't outlive him but you can sure live without him can I talk to somebody look at your neighbor and say you can't live without your God so in 2020 choose God live for God pursue God desire God envision God decide for God slam your neighbor and say neighbor my God is able I see somebody Pharaoh could not stand him the fire could not stand him Pilate could not stand him Herod could not kill him death could not handle him the grave could not hold him if you choose God to become all that God has designed you to be then you will say we don't serve a dead God we serve a living God he's the same yesterday he's the same today he's the same forever if God be for you who can be against you when God says yes no man can say no when God says no no man
man can say yes when God opens a door no man can shut when God shut a door no man can open if he did it yesterday he's the same today he's the same forever I prophesy God is on your side favor is on your side power is on your side victory is on your side I see a young man here tomorrow by this time people will look at you why are not defrauding why are you not stealing why are you not womanizing because you have decided to choose God above all other gods am I talking to somebody in 2020 make quality decisions in 2020 serve the Lord in 2020 pursue God with all your heart in 2020 walk with God. slap your neighbor and say neighbor in this month of February if you choose God above all other God then you will walk in the manifestation of your dreams and your goals I prophesy receive a fresh baptism a baptism of grace a baptism of mercy a baptism of power somebody here today anybody that knew your history I came to tell you you shall become a mystery to all your predecessors can I prophesy tomorrow by this time I see the hand of God is coming upon your life is coming upon your business is coming upon your career is coming upon your destiny somebody here today I declare over your destiny in this month of February you will not die before your time because you have made the most high thy habitation there shall no evil come near you neither shall any plague come to your dwelling house somebody here today I decree over your life receive a fresh covering may God preserve you may God protect you may the hand of God come upon you come upon your children come upon your business come upon your household as you serve the Lord thy God he will bless your bread and your water and no sickness shall come to your dwelling somebody here today I need you to make up your mind and serve God choose God make quality decisions stay in his presence stay under his shelter promote his agenda because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world I will bless the Lord at all times and his praise shall be in my mouth lift up your voice and shout yes Slap your neighbor and say, choose God. Slap your neighbor and say, choose God. Somebody said, choose God. Choose life. Walk with God. Abide with God. Dwell in his house. Dwell in his church. He is the maker. He will make a way. He is a protector. He will protect you. He is a blesser. He will bless you. He is a lifter. He will lift you. Choose God. Choose God. Stand to your feet and say, Choose God. Choose God. Choose God. Choose God. For I've set before you this day life and death. Choose life. Choose life and what? Death. Decision making comes with process. Look at the decision making comes with processing. Everybody is marrying. So what? You want to marry an armed robber? 
watching a movie yesterday of a Roman Catholic priest who was an arm robber. He's a priest in a Sunday morning service. And from Monday to Friday, he's an arm robber. Take your time. Let God bring you to the place of destiny. And you know when God is on your side, nothing else can be against you. Choose life. Choose life. Choose life. Lift your hands. Choose life. Decision making. Quality decisions makes destiny a reality. Quality decisions makes destiny what? Everybody cannot be your friend. Everybody cannot be your friend. Praise the Lord. Everybody can be your friend. Everybody cannot be your friend. I know that I can make it. I know that I can stand. No matter what may come my way. My life is Lift your hands. With Jesus, I, I can, can make it. it. With Him, I know I can stand. No matter what they come to me, my life is in Your hands. With Jesus, with Jesus, I can make it. With Him. Everything old will die. When I was a child, my mother used to walk five miles. My mother is a very fast woman, fast walker. My mother on on ninety fast power. But when she grew, I talked to her yesterday. It's you four days in mental onka. Ah, we just spoke yesterday. I realized that everything young will grow, everything old will die. Take your time and let God produce the best out of your worst situations. Am I talking to somebody? Look at something. Life is not a race. So you don't have to worry, all right? Lift your hands. Everybody singing now. I know that I can make it. I know that I can stand. I know that I can stand. No matter what. No matter what. My life is in your hands. Don't you have to worry. Stretch your hands and look. And don't you be afraid. Joy comes in the morning. Joy comes in the morning. Lift your voice and sing. For this, for this, a friend of Jesus. He will wipe your way. And if your heart, and if your heart is broken, just, just, just. just Oh, I know that I can make it. Let this song minister to you. I know that I can stay. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. Hey, my life is in your hands. With Jesus, with Jesus, I can make it. Hey, with Him, I know I can stay. Shut it, Hey. Stretch your hands. About for the last 10 years, I've received about three calls 
that the Archbishop wanted me. And it never happened. Praise the Lord. I've seen some of my colleagues, contemporaries, colleagues, friends go and preach for him, Reverend Steve, and other fathers. And I asked, why wasn't I ever invited? For years. There was a time Reverend Ampiakofi put me on a poster in 2010. He put me on a billboard. And somebody destroyed me to him. So they put the billboard down. I was in London. I cried the whole Saturday morning. I cried. Not knowing that God prepared my season special. Don't you have to worry. Hey. And don't you be afraid. I'm encouraging you. Joy comes in. Lift your voice and sing it. For there's a friend of Jesus He will wipe your tears away Your blessing may be late If your heart is broken But you will make the latest news Oh, I know that I can leave him I know, I know that I can serve No matter what decision is like putting your money in a treasury bill for 10 years. Quality decisions. Wrong decisions is do and take it now. And it brings you distraction. Look at somebody. Hold the person's hand softly and say let's take our time. Lift your hands up.